Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Iraqi leaders must rise above their differences and come together around a political plan for Iraq's future. Shia, Sunni, Kurds, all Iraqis must have confidence that they can advance their interests and aspirations through the political process rather than through violence. National unity meetings have to go forward to build consensus. Oh, shut the up. Turn it off. I can't listen to this lying, two-faced ass. I can't take him another second. I watched this liar speak today. First off, he shows up an hour late. When have you ever heard of a president being as... I don't have the right word for it. What message does this send to our children... They should just show up at work whenever they want. They should show up at school whenever they want because Mr. Mr. Cool shows up an hour later. Let me tell you who did that on a regular basis, and you're not going to want to hear it. Hitler did it. It was, part of his, it was part of his mesmerizing ability to speak. He'd make audiences wait for up to an hour, and then he came out and gave his big speech. Who was advising Obama? He's becoming increasingly insane. His behavior is that of a madman. I think he's unhinged from reality. The border is overrun with diseased third world individuals who are infecting the country. And he has the nerve to get up there and talk about a unity government in Iraq. That the people must come together. Sunnis and Shia and Kurds must advance their interests, he says, through, political, through the political process. And what does he do in America? He spits on his political opponents. He spits on us. The country is screaming for unity. And this divisive creature, Icarus the president, has the nerve to get up there like he has any authority to tell the Iraqis what to do when he has divided this country in a way it has not been divided since the U.S. Civil War. Well, well, well back in our past. Yeah, we'd like a unity government, Mr. Obama. Once we'd like you to listen to those of us who are fed up with your left-wing fanaticism. Once we'd like a unity government. I want to tell you about Icarus. Icarus is a Greek figure, a mythological figure, who you may vaguely remember from high school. Uh, in, a short, in the short version, it's about a Greek figure who created false wings made of feathers and wax. And while his father warned him not to fly too close to the sun because the heat would melt the wax and the feathers would fall off his fake wings, Icarus ignored his father's instructions not to fly too close to the sun. And the melting wax caused him to fall into the sea where he drowned. And I'm asking you, is Obama not showing the hubris of Icarus? Is this man not psychologically dangerous for the United States and for the world? Flying so close to the sun on his manufactured image, on his manufactured wings? When in the heck does this come to an end? When do we ever get a government back? When do we ever get a government of the people, by the people, and for the people? When the hell are the Republicans going to send the National Guard to the border to stop the swarm of third world individuals swarming over with diseases, smallpox, malaria? Shall I name the diseases? You want to check out the measles epidemic that's about to emerge, the tuberculosis epidemic that's about to emerge? Do you have any idea what this man is doing to your country? Now, he's not alone, by the way. The senile Rupert Murdoch the whipmaster of Fox News, the senile old goat, Rupert Murdoch, has the nerve to write a long speech the other day on how badly we need amnesty. And then the old senile goat, Murdoch, has the nerve to throw out the false canard that Obama has shown restraint, 
to throw out the false canard that 40% of the CEOs in America uh, are immigrants? How many of these 40% come from a Spanish-speaking nation? How many of these 40% snuck across the border? How many of these 40% don't speak English? How many of these 40% don't even speak Spanish, can't even write a Spanish? What a liar that Murdoch is. You look at his New York Post, all it is is about pornography. Pornography, the whole newspaper's pornography. There's not one note about what Obama's doing to the country. The entire newspaper, the entire New York Post, if you look at the front page, one page after the other, it's pornographic. One page after the other, soft corn porn from the Australian immigrant, Rupert Murdoch. And he has the nerve to tell us that 40% of the CEOs in America are immigrants. Well, what a lie that is. We're not talking about immigrants here. We're talking about illegal aliens. We're talking about people who are illiterate in their own language, in their own country. Now we're talking about a president who was so out of touch with reality that I fear he may be a madman. I fear he may be a madman. I think his hubris has gotten so great that he may be a madman. Then I listen to Obama's speech an hour late. An hour late, he bops onto the stage like Mr. Cool. Just used those weights in the gym, pumped himself up, drank a coffee, smoked a cigarette, went out and gave the big lie, gave the big speech again. You know, uh, the speech about unity is what got to me. I started screaming in the room after waiting an hour for this fraud to give his speech. An hour I waited for this fraud to speech, and he comes up with this garbage about a unity government. The people have to work together. All Iraqis must have confidence that they can advance their interests through the political process rather than through violence, while in this country he's provoking violence because he's closed down the political process. And the borders are being overrun. Uh, did anyone hear the speech today? Did anyone have anything to say about it? I'm, I'm the only one angry over this. June 19, 2014, and I'm still enraged by what this thing is doing to our country. I'm enraged by it. I've been watching politics since I'm a kid, since I'm a teenager. A late teenager at that. No, actually, I wasn't political. Now that I'm looking in my journals from 1963, 4, 5, there's not a political word in any of them, now that I think about it. I was not really political until I got older until I saw what liberalism did to people, until I saw the social engineering of affirmative action, until I saw the death of the white male that was coming, until I saw them trying to decimate an entire race in this country in order to advance other races. But now it's metastasized. Now all of us are going to pay for their insanity. Now they're doubling down on decimating our borders, language, and culture, destroying it forever. Where is the government? Where is the central government? Who is going to save the people from these diseased third worlders raging across our border? Who is going to save us from them? I keep asking myself. But then you go to Iraq. You ask yourself about Iraq. How stupid do you have to be to listen to this Icarus talk to us about military advisors? What is he sending them over there with? Souffle kits? They're not military advisors. They're warriors, and they're going to fight. This is the beginning of Vietnam all over again. Or at least it could be. It's ex For those of you, of you who are old enough to remember how it started, we didn't just send an invasion force of 500,000 into Vietnam at once. Oh, no, we sent 300 advisors to start with. Then the advisors got in trouble, so we sent 600 advisors. Then we sent 1,000 advisors. And they were not there to fight, mind you. They were there just to advise, especially now that you have uh, the cowards at the Weekly Standard John McCain, Paul Wolfowitz, and the other neocons, a word that I'm not allowed to use for fear of being called an anti-Semite. The neocons, screaming for blood. They don't like the word neocon. They think it's a code word. Well, it isn't a code word for anyone's race or religion. It's a code word for a bunch of chicken hawks who want your son to die for their, for their uh, military-industrial complex aspirations. That's my opinion.